Okay, so uh, continuing on on the uh, RXDI, got the engine all rebuilt on the floor, ready to go up on the hoist. Gonna drop it in. Uh, what about inside? Anything exciting in here? No, nope, it's all cleaned up, pressure washed, best I can get, pushing all the wires and everything to the side. Gonna lift it up and drop it in. I've done this I don't know how many times in the other videos, so I don't see the point of doing it all again. Okay, we'll bring her down a bit and then I'm going to start hooking everything up. The hardest thing to do, hooking up the compressor vent and then we'll get all the grounds and any wires that we can do before we drop it down because it'll make it a lot easier now than after. And we're cruising right along, drop the engine down in there and just starting to plug things in. All the different pipes and everything that are all labeled. Uh, I have run into a couple of little snags. One of them being the line from the um, valve here down to the air compressor is too short. So I'm going to have to take that off and change it. And the line that goes to the vent, the counterbalance vent, is way too big in diameter. I've lost it now, it's falling down somewhere. I gotta find it. So we have to sort that out. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research and then I'll uh, show you what I found. Uh, what's this here? Yeah. Oh, that's it right there. Crank vent, but that is way too large diameter. So something is mislabeled or mixed up. So counterbalance mystery vent solved. Uh, this is uh, the right uh, tubing that goes to the counterbalance vent. But what they had was someone had gone and put this on here. And when you have that big pipe, and this is the counterbalance vent, it just falls right out. Now you change it to the correct size, it fits like a glove. So a little bit of surgery been done on here. Now I'm going to hook that up hook up the oil, and uh, then we're gonna align the engine. Then I'll show you that, but uh, hooking up all these little bits and pieces, like I said, all the other videos show all that detail, so you should be good to go if you just go check out some of the other videos. Right. Right. Sitting in place now, all the different pipes, vents, uh, wiring all plugged in and hooked up. Put that uh, exhaust part in and put this plastic uh, air box in. You don't put that in, you'll never get it in after you bolt this thing down. Everything gets all jammed up, so you've got to be able to move the engine around to slide it in. So that's in, and now we're ready to do, I'll put the uh, alignment rod in, then we'll bolt the engine down, and then we can move on to the next step. And here's the mounting bracket. Got that from Watercraft Superstore. Use this thing many, many, many times. Um, you can see that we're misaligned and you can even tell with the from the bolt holes down there that they're not aligned so let me get the bolts I'll slide the bolts into place and that'll somewhat lock it where we need to be first one threaded on that's good Okay, now we can move over to the front one. That's probably a lot easier.
Okay, now let's see what we get. All right, let me tighten that down, just hand tight. See how that bar moves in and out. I'd say we're pretty darn good. We're gonna lock her there. Now I need to get a torque wrench. Torque that down. That's a reach. Just going 25 anymore, it'll tear the bushings all to hell. Had that and had to replace the engine mount after installing. Your tendency is to want to really over tighten them, but the mounts can't take it. Okay, uh, pull, I'll pull the uh, alignment bracket off the back. Let's assemble the fuel rail. Getting everything all plugged in. So this goes out to that exhaust manifold, I guess they call it. It's not an exhaust, it's an air exhaust manifold. And your fuel return. And then there's a bracket that goes in between those, which wants to fall down and into the bilge. And then you spend an hour trying to find it and it's stainless steel, so it's not magnetic. And let's see. And then the air compressor supply goes in there and another locking bracket and Loctite. And then we need a fuel supply, which is up here. And another lock and bracket with Loctite holding the screw on. Okay, now that clips on the air injectors. Like so. And then there should be two tall bolts. So I got them here. 13 mil.
And we'll tuck nose down. Connect up the fuel injectors. I will tighten the plugs up. Uh, okay. And that's all there is to that. It's that simple. Exhaust. That is a headache because there's a pipe over here that bolts onto the bottom of this exhaust pipe. There's two pipes up top that go in and one over here. So getting this one on has to go on first and then we got to try and join this all up, get the bracket on or the clamp. You have to put the clamp on first, then put the exhaust in or you can't get the clamp around the pipe. So I am going to clean up the exhaust because it is absolutely covered in goop, professionally installed from the last time, as you can see, filling all the water jackets and everything. Yeah, that's terrible. So I'm going to clean all that off and then we'll get it back in the ski. Look at the, even the bracket is a mess. I'm going to make that nice and shiny clean. All right, it's exhaust time. And this is the hardest thing to do because you're dealing with holding washers up and holding gaskets in place. We got to put that pipe on, on the bottom here. So we got a lot going on. And everything is covered in Permatex. Get this washer out of the way. Okay. Come on, baby. Yeah, this is the hardest thing to do. How do you hold a washer up? We gotta get that bolt in. Now we're getting somewhere. Hoses to go on. Uh, 
that goes. Cutters. Should be another small one for here. And then there's another one here. And another zip tie. Okay, so now, I don't know if that's the bolt. to show you what's up next. Got to put a bolt right in here. That bolts the throttle body up to the exhaust because these actually push on that. So I'm going to take this out again. Put that bolt in. And then we'll put that back on. So I'm going to put a bolt in there and I'm going to see what's going on with this bolt right here. And here we go, the official cold start of the RXDI rebuild. Here we go. special seat it all the way around looks good just left it out in the snow for just a little bit Got a chip in the vein there, a couple of chunks there. All right, now we'll put the pump back together and put it on the machine. Okay, and the impeller. Actually, we'll put this in the vise. Now we'll spin on the impeller. a wrench and a tool which is a 23 mil socket
think these are pretty cheesy uh, cheap they were only 15 bucks a piece so I wanted to try it out and see if we can save some dough we'll save some dough if it doesn't work we change it now I got a rubber cap to go on there which I put right here And she's ready to go on the machine. Drive time. Let's put the pump on. Ladder's in the way. Let's make sure we got our little O-rings in there, which we do. Gotta slide this in, and then I gotta go inside the hall and put the retaining collar on. See if that's in far enough. Almost. Okay. See that? Now I can push the drive shaft through and bolt her up. Bit of Loctite. Come on. Not getting to the end of the bottle. go under the hood. There she goes. Get that clip in there without dropping it. That's the clip on it. And that's it. Whoo! That one did not want to go on. Let's install the steering nozzle and reverse gate. And I need some Loctite and a 13 mil bolt. We got steering. How about reverse? Okay. 
good. So now we got steering and reverse. Now we got to get this trim sorted out. Oh, the spring. Where's the spring? One goes there, the other goes around there. find a bolt for that. I found a bigger one. That's good. I don't think it's in there too far. Sticks out like quarter inch maybe. Okay. Well guys I think that's about all we're gonna do on this one. It was going to go to the scrap yard. It's gonna part it out decided that I was going to keep it. Way too nice a condition to take it to the junkyard, but it needed it a lot. Uh, engine and everything was toast, but a lot of good parts. Found a lot of broken parts, but uh, we got it back together. It's a perfectly good running machine and should last another 20 years now. So totally makes sense uh, to keep it going. Uh, can't test drive it for another two months because we just got a huge snowstorm yesterday. Did all the digging out today but just a little too chilly out on the lake for me so i think what we'll do is we'll push this one aside like i said a little cleanup sticker removal and that will be it for that uh, moving forward let me push this thing actually literally pushing it forward i found this heapster Another one, and this one was supposed to be for parts. It is filthy dirty. Let me go over to the other side here, move the cover. Filthy because I had to bring it down in the uh, snow. But you gotta jump on these things because they sell fast. Seats toast, sat in the field for years and uh, I'm looking through the thing. It's got 47 hours on it. So somebody bought it. Let me see if I can get the seat off. Bought it, used it along with another one, very little, and then it sat. But they've taken the head off, everything's loose, nothing's bolted in. So I think what I'll do is I'll just bolt the head down, put the fuel rail on, crank it over, check compression, all that stuff, see if it's uh, gonna need a rip out or what it's gonna need. But this will be our next project. So looking forward to that. So uh, until then, uh, you guys stay safe.